<sighs> you know, I find it very interesting that this video has been requested several times. And of all the comments, every person fails to mention that there are 22 episodes in one season. This makes one thing abundantly clear. You all hate me. Dan it, Dan it. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it. I like that. It's going to be my theme song. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Batman. So it's been a minute since I've paid a visit to McKinley High. I provided commentary for the pilot episode. Then shortly thereafter, the show disappeared from streaming sites. And since you guys enjoyed the first video, we are going to pick up where we left off. Many of the Blush Bunnies present Glee. The Glee Club is getting off the ground and the second episode is loaded with desperation. Mr. Shu has a plan to make it everything it can be and more. And by plan, I mean take a song they did in 93 and perform it at a pep rally to recruit members. Now, don't get me wrong. A classic song is a classic song. But Le Freak Say Chic, girl gone. To be fair, the kid's choice wasn't any better. Gold Digger by Kanye. <laughs> you better stop playing with me. Like, I get it that you want to keep up with the times, but what's with all the rapping? I thought Glee Club was about singing. This is so corny. <laughs> this is so corny talking about from the top or run it back or whatever he said x that off the list <sighs> we're getting more into these characters and i'm guessing rachel's ongoing obsession with quinn will last until she finally hooks up with huck i mean what's his name finn desperate the desperation goes into overdrive when Rachel and Finn use the Cheerios copy machine to make flyers so they can recruit more people to the uncool club. And Sue was heated. The way she was talking, I'm thinking they were doing something inappropriate. The copy machine? <laughs> really? <laughs> Teachers get mad at the dumbest stuff. My high school was six stories high. My locker was on the sixth floor. My first class was on the first floor. Swim class. No, I never actually learned to swim. Focus. My second class was on the sixth floor. You had five minutes in between classes, thousands of kids in the halls and on the stairwell. You couldn't be late or you get written up. All of this while two perfectly functioning elevators sat waiting to be used by faculty and staff. They gave us death over convenience and it still haunts me. But back to Glee. So we're back to Rachel and her obsession with Huck. She joined a celibacy group just to be closer to him and he joined just to be close to his girlfriend. I have one question. A celibacy group? Really? This show is more tongue in cheek than I think I'm ready for. No pun intended. <laughs> Much like Rachel and Finn, another forbidden brewing romance is on the rise. Will the janitor and Emma have this moment where they want to make out, but they hold back because they want to break up his happy home. Interesting. Emma seems to have some sort of OCD and I was wondering when someone was going to say something. They have a moment and it was cute. First she helped him, then he helped her. And I know y'all said that he was a creep, but I haven't seen that yet. So I'm just going to enjoy him while I can. Now Miss Barry uses her expertise to recruit new members to the Glee Club. And the only way to do this is apparently gyrating to Salt and Pepper's Push It of all songs. Again, another song that's a bop, but why is the Glee Club doing it? Like, what is this? I don't know if I'm going to make it through the corniness, guys. I just, <laughs> I just can't. And they get a standing ovation. Please, please. Someone else who doesn't need a standing ovation for their performance is Terry. In the pilot episode, she was rubbing me the wrong way. I didn't like the way she talked to Will or the way she treated him overall. And I knew the whole pregnancy bit was a ploy to keep him in an unhappy marriage. I didn't think it was a hysterical pregnancy, but I knew she was lying. Queen can't sing next. I know that was random, but it had to be said. Go girl, give us nothing. Like, why is she here? So Huck makes it clear that the fair maiden that he chooses is, wait, why am I looking? Wait, 
why am I looking at my Bridgerton notes? How did this jump from Glee to where are my notes? <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> did I turn the page? Okay, Huck chooses Quinn, and Rachel decides to give this rendition of "Take a Bow." a song about a deceptive relationship. Girl, that is not your man. <laughs> the drama of it all. Confidence and guts. That's what it takes to be a real man. Really? This is the speech that Mr. Schuster's dad opens with when he announces that he and his wife are having a fake baby. Now, these are definitely admirable traits, but it does not define you. I don't know how I'm feeling about this dad. It's giving regretful, neglect, no good deadbeat, but we will see. Anyway, we make our way over to Emma, Will's bootleg therapist. You know, this whole confidence and guts thing is really getting to him. He apologizes for dumping all his relationship drama on her, and she up there trying to <laughs> reverse psychology on Will talking about, yeah, because I'm in a relationship and you're in a relationship. Trying to make him jealous because she's no longer available. Didn't work. He don't care nothing about her relationship with the football coach who happens to be in his pre-med life crisis group, the Acafellas, which I completely blame on his dad. Had he not fed his doubts, we would not be subjected to this monstrosity. And I don't understand how Sandy, the creep teacher, is just constantly coming up to the school even though legally he's not allowed to. That's way too much. It's not sitting right with me. Something else that's not sitting right with me, Mercedes and Kirk. Why? <laughs> Santana and Quinn tell Mercedes that she's Kirk's type and she knows dang on well she don't have a chance in this lifetime or the next. But oddly enough I think this is more common than not in real life for people to fall in love with their gay best friends. You spend all this time together they understand you accept you the way you are and boom now you head over heels and they not even looking in your direction. And Mercedes refusing to see it is classic. Pitiful, actually. Meanwhile, the Glee Club is being bossed around by Buddy. Peak spirit hands energy. That went nowhere. Just like the Acafellas group, thank God. You gotta know when to say it was good while it lasted and it's time to call it quits. I will say that it was nice to see Will's fake baby mama support her husband and have a loving, genuine moment between them. Just like when Kirk comes out to Mercedes. I'm happy she didn't have some weird meltdown and she was supportive. Fast forward to Kirk in the basement getting down with the get down to single ladies. Worldwide phenomenon and he gets caught by his beer toting pops. Well, he didn't actually have a beer but he either just finished one or was on his way to one because, I mean, just look at him. I've been calling this boy Kirk all this time and his name is Kurt with a T. So Kurt and his friends try to come up with a lie on Sly to conceal his identity. They tell this man that not only does he have a girlfriend, but that he plays football. <laughs> this should be fun. But this pregnancy business is not. Terry won't even let her husband touch her because she's carrying a pillow on the oven. Not in, on. This whole episode is about concealing the truth. There's Terry, you got Kurt at football practice with Finn and all the single ladies hand waving pays off. Who would have thought that Beyonce would come in handy for football? You got Quinn with the surprise pregnancy. Wait, how is Quinn pregnant? What happened to the celibacy group? The hot tub? Wait, can this actually happen? Let me educate myself before I roast her. Now, why would she lie like that? Trying to trap somebody and put them on child support. <laughs> you got Sue with her continuous evil plotting. I'm not sure why she despises Will so much or Glee Club, but it is quite hilarious. Although, I don't like the fact that she puts the kids in harm's way by putting Sandy in charge of this little revenge group. Like, really? So with Rachel switching teams, Glee Club is hanging in the balance. They made her the saving grace, so it's kind of their fault, but with Finn with a baby on the way, his bright idea is to get a football scholarship to find a means of eventually being able to provide. I'm hoping it's not by being a professional player because good luck with that. But that can only happen if they start winning games. So he needs Will to teach the players how to dance? 
Okay. <laughs> While Finn is trying to figure out this new life as a dad, we find out that Quinn... <laughs> Finn and Quinn. Who came up with that? But we find out that Quinn has been baking cookies with Puck. He the baby daddy? Ooh, child, this is ghetto. So Terry then plotted on this girl to have her baby, giving her prenatal vitamins and everything. I guess she would have a bottle full since she has no reason to take them. And what makes matters worse is that her husband actually provided a space for her to come clean. When they were discussing how hard it must be for Quinn to keep her pregnancy a secret, she could have pulled a, well, actually honey, there's something I need to tell you. But instead, she stood there looking dumb, and now we gotta suffer through. I'm here for it. Another thing I'm here for, when the football team bust out with the single ladies routine, it took me out. Something about seeing them in the uniforms doing those dances is just comical. And the beautiful thing is, after all of that, Kurt finally tells his dad that he's gay, something his dad has known since he was three. He wasn't totally comfortable, but I was happy that Kurt was able to unveil his true self. It was a step forward. Don't stop believing. The pregnancy rumors, that is. Finn being the caring baby daddy that he is, he's looking out for his girl and her Cabbage Patch Kid. Of course, he's not knowing that he didn't plant the seed. Then you have Miss Fakeabump still trying to scam her husband. The wheels are starting to turn for him, but he's not grasping on because he's got too much on his mind. Like how to replace their star Rachel. And here's where we insert a ridiculous plot point. His bright idea is reaching out to April, somebody who never graduated high school in order to keep the train moving with the Glee Club. She was super popular back in high school and now she's a professional squatter. Interesting that they often portray the popular crowd as lonely nobodies when they become adults. Is there really truth to that? Hmm. Meanwhile, Finn tries to work his magic to get Rachel to come back to the play and he's straight up playing in her face. This would have been a more suitable moment for her to sing a song about it instead of two seconds after meeting him, but <laughs> what do I know? All this work Finn is doing is null and void anyway because April drinks like a fish, so Rachel gets to come back to save the day. Sue is on the prowl. The thing that gets me about her is she stops at nothing to get what she wants. The level of sabotage is next level. So to ensure that Will and his glee club fails so that she can get all of her Cheerios back, she tells Terry about her husband's work wife. Now Sue was definitely heading with this because why would she break up a happy home? Will and Emma's home. I wish somebody would have tried to come between me and my work husband who didn't know he was my work husband who didn't even work at the same location as me who I haven't seen or spoken to since I left that job but he was fun to talk to and fun to look at. That's not doing anything for me now but since this is a safe space I thought y'all should know. Okay, this is getting awkward. So Terry comes in as the new nurse, but she's more interested in scoping out the guy of the baby she's planning to adopt. His bone structure, his sleep schedule. You know, he's been losing out on sleep because of all the singing he's not singing, baby he's not carrying, homework he's not doing. It's tiring. She prescribes him with vitamin D to help wake him up. And it works because this confession's mash up was given. Wasn't expecting that. And neither were the ladies, so they have their work cut out for them. I think I failed to mention they were in a bit of a competition, boys against girls. They've gotten complacent with the glee club, so Mr. Shu gets a little competition going to ignite the fire. Of course, the girls didn't know the boys were hopped on vitamin D, but what do you know? They turned around and joined the hyper train. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, but Terry thinking she's a real nurse is hilarious. Diagnosing left and right. Girl, you do not know what you're talking about. Can y'all hear this truck outside of my window? This is so annoying. Every time. <sighs> it's always something. The girls mashup of Halo and Walking on Sunshine was definitely no match for what the boys gave. And I'm gonna leave that at that. 
someone who wasn't walking on sunshine was Emma when she was proposed to. She said no and yes, but mainly no all at the same time. No ceremony, don't see each other, live in separate parts of town, keep it a secret, and he just goes with the flow. Yeah, let's get married and pretend to be together while being married, but not really. Girl, what? What? After all this goes down, the cherry on top is Sue being appointed co-chair because Will don't know how to multitask with being a good teacher, a good husband, a good work husband, and a glee captain. Sue and Will are going at it. I can't believe they aren't able to coexist. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm kidding. We knew this was coming. But their leadership is hanging on by thread. He is trying to win brownie points with the kids by getting their input on what they want to sing. Mercedes is like, can we do something more black? Kurt is like, yeah, this show tune stuff is lame. Then Rachel chimes in and says, it's Glee Club, not Crunk Club. Excuse you? So we just gonna... We're just going to be hourly racist like that? Nobody's going to say anything? No, honestly, the whole race and minority thing is actually pretty funny so far. They divide the students into two groups, and it's nothing more than a pissing contest, to be honest. She just wants the club to disintegrate, while Will is truly passionate about it. Sue takes all of the minorities, leaving him with what he clearly deems the lesser of the group, because homeboy was pissed. He went off. Sue, I cannot believe you're doing this. Sir, she does not care. Relax. So in the midst of their back and forth, you've got fake baby daddy and new mommy tending to the pregnancy. They are having a baby girl. And because during this time, having an unorthodox name was the thing to do, i.e. Gwyneth Paltrow's daughter, Apple, Finn comes up with the perfect name for their daughter. Drizzle. Because, quote... You know how awesome it is when it's drizzling outside, but it's not raining, so it smells like rain, but you don't need an umbrella to go outside? End quote. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What are you talking about? What is this? Please stay in school. And who keeps coming up with these song selections? Like, I like the songs. And I like the fact that we're trying to be diverse in genre, but it's just reading corny. Ride With Me by Nelly? Please. This is madness. And I actually like the song. Now, no air. They sound pretty good. But the walking in the hallway with the wind blowing. What is this, a 2000s video? So they get to the final showdown. And as soon as Rachel opens her mouth to sing the first line of no air, Sue is like, okay, that's enough. She had her chance. Come on. Finn's like, is there a fire? Sue is like, no, and that's the problem. They're living in squalor and on food stamps. I'm not about to let you bore them to death. <laughs> and Mercedes goes, my dad's a dentist. Sue is so disrespectful. <laughs> I love it. But the kids are tired. They walked out on them like enough is enough. Sue steps down as co-director which is much needed, and unfortunately for Quinn, she didn't make a clean break. She spreads the pregnancy news around school, humiliating her, and kicks her out of the Cheerios. There is clearly some level of teacher-student confidentiality breach here. Like, how can you just put her business out there like that because you call yourself being mad? This is when you step up your game like Will did. Speaking of... Since he is feeling good about standing up to Sue, it's time to take the reins at home. He's finally going to the doctor with his wife. How she managed to keep this going is beyond me. I can see if he was a deadbeat with no concerns about the well-being of his child, but he's been by her side the whole time, haven't even touched the belly. The doctor going along with it is... I don't understand. Was he blackmailed and I missed it? Because why? Violations left and right. So imagine going to your guidance counselor because you need advice on how to regain your coolness. You got a whole baby on the way and this is what you need guidance on? Somebody needs to sort out their priorities. But Emma's so enamored with Mr. Shu, it's not like she's offering them much anyway. On top of the fact, she can't even relate to what they're going through because she is Elaine. And she has more important things to worry about, like getting married. Now naturally, because this is Glee, they can't just let a moment pass without throwing in some cringe. Mr. Shu has volunteered to help them with their wedding dances. And what other song could you dance the night away with your new life partner other than the thong song? This thong song. I just, I can't. Meanwhile, 
Puckerman puts the moves on Rachel and his baby mama is missing that old thing while her fake baby daddy is starting to feel a little jealous. I see this triangle is just going to keep going in circles. You see what I did there with the triangle? The circle? The shapes? But it's a metaphor. Did you catch it? Because I thought it was pretty great. I mean, I'm not even trying. <laughs> but at least Ken finally stands up to Mr. Shu for moving in on his woman. I mean, Terry tried to break up a happy home, but she wasn't even in the know. This been happening in his face. He has to be tired. Like, imagine going to work every day and you see your wife getting chummy with some other guy because she's actually in love with him and she couldn't care less if you miss work for a month. Yikes. And to make sure things are hard for Will, he goes as far as asking the football players to choose between Glee and a game. Finn is the only person that was holding out for the sake of holding on to his popularity, but he comes to his senses. At this point in the show, we get more into Artie. Up until this point, we haven't seen much of him, and unfortunately, when we do, it's when he's been discriminated against. The Glee Club needs Bus to go to a competition and it's not wheelchair accessible. All the kids are like, well, just have your dad take you. I'm sure it doesn't bother you. Rachel's like, we didn't think you'd take it personally. And Artie goes, well, you're irritating most of the time. Don't take it personally. <laughs> Get her, Artie. Get her. Because girl, bye. And to make them empathize, Mr. Shu makes them do a number in wheelchairs and spend at least three hours in it a day. Someone else dealing with discrimination? Kurt. Not being able to sing the lead in the song Wicked because historically it's sung by a girl. So his dad tries to have his back but falters under pressure because he is whack. What will people think? Will they judge him? Who cares? This is your kid. Grow some and stand beside him. Kurt goes on to parent his dad by protecting him from ridicule because he has a heart. Sue was on some funny stuff with bringing on a disabled girl to the Cheerios. Just the way she was going about it was fishy and Will thought so too, so I'm glad it wasn't just me. Turns out her sister is disabled and she was just looking out for the girl. So she's not so stone cold after all. She actually has a heart too. Who would have thought? But somebody who crushed my heart? My achy breaky heart? Okay, that was a bit dramatic. But when I say I did not see it coming with Tina? So her and Artie are on this date. And he's like, yeah, you get used to maneuvering in a wheelchair after some time. Just like with your stutter. So she goes, well, actually, I've been faking it. I don't have a stutter. And he looked at her like, bitch, after you done kissed me, you tell me this? And I feel for him because now you have me thinking we bonding and you just doing it to avoid being called on in class. You better get up there and present that paper. Girl, bye. It is ballot time and Mr. Shu is letting Faith decide by putting his name in the hat. He gets paired with Rachel and this is where it starts to get weird. He's trying to play it like, oh, she's feeling me. I know this is the beginning of the end for my admiration for Will. I just know it. Now in Rachel's defense, Oh my god, I can't believe I'm about to defend Rachel. Rachel is a vulnerable teen girl. Very impressionable and in search of love. So, so though it was just a duet in class, she definitely read into it and made it out to be more than it was. It happens. Finn and Kurt being paired is hilarious. Finn is not feeling being paired with Kurt, but it has little to do with Kurt and more to do with his personal life. You know, the pitfalls of being a fake baby daddy. Kurt saw right through this, like, okay, talk to me, what's going on? And allowed him to express himself freely. You go, Kurt. We love a supportive friend. I mean, he's totally in love with him, but at least he's there even if it's for his own selfish reasons. In the meantime, Mr. Shu tries to ward off Rachel with a song literally saying she's too young right over her head. And of course, this is when we see Terry, who's been missing in action, taking advantage of her crush on Will, having her in there cooking and cleaning for him. Girl, you need to stop bringing attention to yourself and worry about how you're gonna keep faking this pregnancy. Speaking of fake pregnancies, Puck finally breaks his silence and tells Mercedes that he's the real baby daddy and she's not here for it, which I don't agree with. Yes, on one hand, Puck is not the guy you want to procreate with, but Finn never got a chance. Him finding out later will ruin his life. His mama even took her in when her parents threw her out. Think about how devastated he would be to learn that he is living a lie. But no, by all means, protect the lying hussy. Speaking of protection, Mr. Shoes ex-admirer Pepper 
finally talk some sense into Rachel. Like, listen, as crazy as you think I am, we are one in the same. And just like I was left heartbroken, you will be too. Let go while you're ahead. So I'm glad the whole student teacher romance is over. My God, I hope it's over. You know, I don't think I can take more than that. Cause y'all say he got creepy and I just, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna watch that. <laughs> We are closer and closer to sectionals and Sue is not letting up of her control over Will. I mean, she has nothing to do with the Glee Club, but wants absolutely everything to be under her watch so that she can get all her Cheerios back, but more importantly, see Will fail. He thinks she's feeding their show to other schools so they can know what's coming and be prepared. So he goes over and talks to the head of the other Glee Club, Eve. Or wait, what's her name in this? <laughs> Miss Hitchens. And of course, the black people gotta have the ghetto less fortunate school because it has to be realistic, right? They don't even have an auditorium. So he puts on his savior cap and invites them to use theirs. And now he's all intimidated by them and Rachel is just like, don't be. It's just hierography. They ain't really doing nothing for real. But of course, he couldn't help but to do his own hierography to yet another Beyonce song. Did the producers have a contract with B or something? Because I feel like we are gonna go through her whole discography. After their performance, it was a nice moment to see the deaf students show them simple is better. Like y'all doing too much, just sing. Wait, were they throwing shade at Beyonce for doing hierography? I just thought about that. Ow. I'm gonna leave that alone. We're finally getting some action on this baby case. Quinn wants to keep her baby, but only if she's with Puck and not Finn. Terry is freaking out, so her sister comes up with this plan to have Quinn to babysit her rugrats, which is kind of a genius idea because those kids are unhinged definitely would make anybody rethink their life's decisions. But she totally outsmarts them, proving that she might not be too bad at this baby mama thing. The curveball that she didn't see coming, and neither did I, was Santana and Puck with the dirty text. The thing is, I don't feel bad for her. She a liar and a cheater, so girl, bye with those crocodile tears. She agrees to give her daughter to Terry so she can have a good dad. Finn tells her about him going over to Rachel's as a way to clear the air and she still refuses to tell the truth. Yeah, I don't think I like her. It's time to take yearbook photos. And to be fair, yearbook photos have traditionally been hit or miss, but it doesn't help to be a part of the nerd club. Lee kids have always been the butt of the joke, but they have the added terror of their photo being terrorized. Now, what I'm not understanding is this whole buy an ad thing. Buy an ad in the yearbook? A book you're gonna toss in the back of your closet and completely forget about until 10 years later? I wish I would. They nominate to elect two people to represent the group in the photo. Of course, everybody is dipping and dodging, but Rachel finally gets Finn to agree. And uh, his fate is not the greatest. I always think it's hilarious when the popular guy is all of a sudden looked down upon for doing one thing that's outside of their norm. Like it never registers to them that these people are not your friends if they turn on you just because you trying something different. But anyway, Rachel ends up doing her photo alone and the photographer is like, you get a couple of shots, that's it. I got a real job to get to. I'm a director, honey. Why this girl breaks out crying? So he's like, wait, I'm sorry. And she goes, I can and cry on demand you freaking psycho why can't you just ask where the casting call is like a regular person goodness so they do this number in the mattress commercial which i mean the sing-along jingle type commercials are the most memorable i never buy from them but i know the product by sight so if nothing else they accomplish something in life but in more pressing news will finds the fake baby bump so he's rummaging through drawers looking for his pocket square and boom he confronts terry like um what is this she's talking about it's a pregnancy pad for when you shop it for maternity clothes <laughs> girl he snatched that belly off so fast and went off on her as he should this whole pregnancy was weird. Couldn't touch her, couldn't see a glimpse of the belly, didn't get any pregnancy updates. I'm really surprised it took him this long. And to make it so bad, she really put him through the ringer. He had to give up on his dreams, get a second job, sell his car. I mean, sacrifice after sacrifice. But the truth finally came out. So it's like, does she still want Quinn's baby? Because it's very much giving single mother. 
So now that the cat's out of the bag about fake baby mama, we need to look at what's about to happen with fake baby daddy. Rachel is the only person in the Glee Club that doesn't know about it and everybody is looking for ways to keep it from her for their own selfish reasons. Because let's face it, Rachel can't hold water, especially when it comes to her boo. But something very interesting happens during this very brief conversation. Everybody thinks Santana spilled the beans in order to get back at Puck because they are quote, dating. And she's like, sex isn't dating. And Brittany goes, if it were, me and Santana would be dating. And I, oh, I was not expecting that. Okay, storyline. I'm sure there's more where that came from. But in the meantime, sectionals are among us. What this whole school year for Glee Club has been working towards. Only problem is they don't have Mr. Shu. He's been disqualified thanks to Sue. So Emma comes in to save the day, though her wedding is on the same day. She doesn't want to marry Ken anyway, so her priorities are where they need to be. But the club has to finalize their set list, including a solo ballad. And of course, none other than Rachel thinks she should be the one to do it. Mercedes steps up to the challenge and we finally get what I have personally been waiting for it. I mean, up until this point, the singing for the most part has been decent, but nothing to write home about. Mercedes gave me chills for her rendition of I Am Telling You, like literal goosebumps. And that song is no walk in the park. Only a special type of vocalist can deliver it. I will give y'all a sample on how to do it, but my back hurts. I got a full Kids are outside. The birds are just high. I only had a bagel for breakfast. gas in my car, so it's not gonna come out the way I need it to. <clears throat> but Rachel ends up telling Finn that he's the fake baby daddy and as you can imagine he was not happy to hear that he went Mr. Shoe on all of them and yes that is heartbreaking to not only be cheated on but to be lied to as well however comma he wasn't ready to be a dad anyways so I mean Look at the bright side. This information, of course, makes it harder for him to be around everybody, but considering the other schools stole their set list, he has to make a comeback. Now, here's the part that got me. They're talking about switching up the show, and Mercedes is like, Rachel, you should do the solo. You're the best singer we have. And Kurt agrees. I'm sorry, what? Rachel can sing, but it's definitely more show tuney. We're not gonna say she's the best. Now nah, that's pushing it. Speaking of pushing it, Ken finally comes to his wit's end with Emma. You know, the whole being in love with a whole nother man and not having the slightest interest in him. He had enough of forcing this relationship. But unfortunately for Will, Emma is not interested in playing second best. Well, she pretends not to be anyways because she's still ends up with them. We end the season with Sue being suspended for all of her menacing activities and the Glee Club winning sectionals. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention that Quinn decided to keep her baby and raise it alone. That's commendable. I still don't like her. <sighs> the long awaited return of Glee is now here. This video only covered the first half of the season. I gotta break it up because that's a lot of episodes to watch. If you made it this far in the video, put a bunny in the comments. Also, let me know down below your initial reaction to the show. And who were your favorite characters at the start? So far, Sue is my favorite. She's completely inappropriate, but it works. My opinion may change as the season goes on, though. I feel like I said this in the first video and asked this question. Just tell me again. Let's talk. <laughs> Also, I still read everybody's comments. I did slow down on replies because somehow some of my comments and the hearted comments get deleted. I don't know if YouTube is not used to the creator literally commenting back to everyone or what. So until I get that figured out, I'll try to pace out my comments a bit. Um, and if I start a conversation with you and don't reply back, I apologize. The thread notifications don't show on the studio app, which is what I use. I need to put in a request about that. I've been meaning to say that. Before you go, check out the Blush Bunny merchandise store. The shirt is cute, a nice fit. The hoodie I wear almost every day because it's super comfy. Yes, even in the summertime. <laughs> The Blush Bunny Podcast. Make sure you are following the podcast. I know I've been lacking in uploads over there, but honestly, I'm still trying to figure out all the ins and outs. Right now, I have 601 total listens from four episodes, 
which sounds like a good number, but doesn't amount to anything on the platform. It's much harder to grow a podcast and a YouTube channel because it's based on your reach. And my outreach methods are not doing much. At least on YouTube, you have recommendations, you know. But the upside of podcasts I am seeing so far is that there is the potential to make more money. And I have to tell you, these YouTube checks are on the low end, okay? Solari TV explained it perfectly. I hope I pronounced that correctly. His video is linked below. If you want to know what it's really like being a smaller YouTuber, check it out. Tell him I sent you. So hopefully I make it big soon. But ciao. In the meantime, follow the podcast. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to click like. Hop on over to that subscribe button and hit the bell. Otherwise, YouTube will never show you my videos. As always, I'm all ears. Until next time. Bye.